our our time. Um, tomorrow we'll have some discussion groups and all that. I mean, Amen. So I just want to continue. Uh, let's go to let's let's just you know visit some scriptures and then we'll continue. We are still, we want to start a journey of discovering, of appreciating who we are as Yoruba Amina. Uh, can we go to the Psalms 139? Psalms 139. Psalms 139, verse 15. Uh, we might read up to up to 17 if time allows. Are you there? Uh, so let me read. Um, my flame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrapped, wrapped in the lowest parts of the earth. The psalmist is telling us that his flame who mm -hmm, has a different uh, version of this? Who is having a different version? Whichever, so long as it's different from what I've just read. 15 says yes. in KJV, mm -hmm. my substance my substance, yes, was hidden. Uh -huh. Was hidden or was not hidden? Was not hidden. Yes. Was not hidden. Uh huh. Yes. When I was made in secret mm -hmm. and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Amen. 16. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, they were all written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. Hallelujah. Now, uh, I told you, like, like a person, like a nation. Nations are born as an individual. Nations grow. Nations die. Nations can be bound. The way an individual can be bound. And nations can be delivered the way an individual can be delivered. So, the service is telling us something very, very interesting here. That before we even came to be, came into our, you know, our mother's wombs, we were there. Before even our substance was formed, we were there. Hallelujah. So what was there before our substance was formed? Yes, I want you to think about that. God saw me before even I was formed. So what was there which God saw or which was before God? Before he formed me, I get that. Yes. When uh, good enough is is an engineer, when when you are going to build something like this, any house, whatever, before this structure came into existence, the first thing the architects or the builders do is to have a plan. It's the plan which describes, it's the plan which helps the builder to come up with something of this kind. And when you go and look at the plan, so the plan exists, the plan of this building existed before even this building existed. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So this is what the service is trying to tell us. 
that before God, you know, started, you know, forming a hook bar, he had a plan for that person, for that nation. Because God created one, and out of one came nations. Also, so, what was the plan of God when he was creating Rupa? What he was supposed to do does not start the day you got born again. No. Whatever you were supposed to do did not start the day you, you got born again. God had a plan before you were even born. Amen. Amen. So, briefly, can we, can we draw an example of these physical plans? For instance, the plan of this building, the plan of your church, the plan of your house, the plan of... What do you, why do you think we need a plan before we start building? Why do you think God needed a plan before he started creating me, creating a rukba? Why do you think God needed a plan? Why do we need plans when we are building a structure? Yes. <laughs> For what you intend to make fit its purpose. Wow. So the plan what you are going to the plan gives us the purpose the structure of what we are going to build. And also, by me looking at the plan, now, the other one is, that the other one is the plan. We are not yet there, but we can see where we are going. Are we getting it? So the, the, the plan is now giving us the structure, and the structure gives us the purpose. So what purpose, or which purpose, did God have in mind when he was creating a Vukuba, when he was creating a Muganda? That's what I want you to first think about. Amina, that's what I want us to, because it is the gist of the trade. Can I add stuff? Yes, yes, no problem. Why plan? Yes, yes. Exceptions may really have a three reason. Yeah, huh? Number one is beauty. Beauty! Perfect. Beauty is planned before it is put on the ground. As you are seeing, it's there. Number two is comfort. Comfort. Okay. Where sewage is, where bedrooms are, <laughs> so that you don't put garage in the bedroom. <laughs> for, for comfort. Yeah. But yes. number three is for economy. Economy. You don't waste resources when things are planned well. I request that we write these few, <laughs> these are these are important <laughs> revelations. Mm -hmm. Yes, why, why do you need a plan when you are going to do something? Mm -hmm. Purpose, beauty, comfort, you know, you don't waste resources. Mm -hmm. Who else can think of something? Because we are talking about, we want to know what God had in mind when he was creating the root bars. I think these are the things which God had in mind. You know, some of you, 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 you reach an extent of even hating your tribes. <laughs> some people don't like their tribes. Now, if you don't like your tribe, what are you directly telling God? Mm -hmm. What are you directly telling Him? The one who drew the plan. He made a mistake. He did not know what he was doing. <laughs> uh -huh. What are you? And again, what will happen if you build 
not according to his plan. What again will happen? What will happen if you don't build according to the plan he had? Oh, how, how can you interpret it in our situation? I can't fulfill his purpose. Huh? Now, if we don't discover who we are, we can't know what we are supposed to do. Hallelujah. We have agreed on that. Hallelujah. Now, and if we don't live, if we don't do, what God ordained us to do. That means that are, we are not building according to the plan. That's, true. That's why when he comes, he will just tell you to go to his left hand side. <laughs> because he did not build according to yeah. his plan. Yeah. It was not approved. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, please, in other words, you are telling God that the plan which you do, you, eh? I've not approved it. That's why I'm not going to use it. <laughs> so I'm using my own plan. If you don't live according to to God's purposes, so how can we make every look bad? How can we make everyone who is living in our land to do, to behave according to the plan? Of the one who assigned us this land. How can we make? I am aware that people are doing a lot of things which are abominable, which are defiling this land, which are abusing the plan of our maker. And if if the land is uh, is, 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 is defiled. If we don't live according to his purposes, then automatically the land will be judged. Amina. Okay. Any other any other reason why we need a plan? Why do we need a plan? Yes, my sister. Is work. Is work. Work, work. It is, yeah. You don't struggle when you are building. You just go and look at the plan. Okay? Okay? Here is supposed to be a column. And it was a column. You put a column. <laughs> it is. It is work. Is this. What is the spell of is? That is it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. Wow, beautiful. Mm -hmm. What else? We are training. I'm not. I'm not preaching. Mm -hmm. So you are free to raise up your hand and tell us what you. What you have? Mm -hmm. Give some new courage. What? Courage. Huh? Courage. Courage. Yes, we are looking. Why? Why? Why do you need a plan? Give some courage, okay? How can we? Mm -hmm. Who can help me to? To make me understand it, to understand his point. My yes. Husband. Okay. You first bring it as your well. I'm just adding my guidance. Wow. Guidance. Wow. For, for courage. Um, guidance. Amina, you can't go wrong, Amina, if you follow the plan when you are building. He can tell us that even the, when they are building, they even specify the materials. Not so. The, 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 sometimes they can even specify the quality and the quantity of the materials. So you, you have a guide of everything, the structure and everything. I mean, so as a Kapwa, not uh, as a Baganda, as a Rukbara, as a young colleague, do we have that guide? Do we have a guide on how we're supposed to live, on how we're supposed to do things, 
Oh, just do whatever comes on our way. Yes, my sister. Oh, when, 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 whenever we are doing whatever we are doing in our land, do we go back and look at that guide which God has or had when he was creating us? Okay, my sister. Yes, please. Mm. It, it gives you what? The zeal. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. The zeal. I mean, I think we can give as many as possible. But now, I want you to translate this into our situation, into our life. I mean, do we have the master plan of this life? Oh, we just we just do whatever. What did the uh, uh, go to First Corinthians chapter three? There's something which Paul said there, which which can be of importance to us. First Corinthians chapter is it chapter three? Yes. Uh, yes. Three ten. Three ten. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Bishop. 310. Who is there? If you are there, please just read. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. Mm -hmm. It says, Yes. According to the grace, the special endowment for my task in the mm. family of my universal, mm. for God bestowed on me, mm -hmm. like a skillful architect wow. mm -hmm. and a master builder, mm. I laid the foundation. Mm -hmm. Now another man is building upon it. Mm -hmm. and let each man be careful mm -hmm. how he builds upon it. Wow. For no other foundation can any man anyone lay than that which is already laid, wow. which is Jesus Christ, the wow. Messiah, the Anointed One. Please, read, 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 read. Well, but, there's something interesting. Please, but, listen carefully to this scripture. But if anyone builds upon the foundation, mm -hmm. where they to be you? With gold, mm -hmm. silver, mm -hmm. precious stone, mm -hmm. wood, mm -hmm. hair, straw, the work of each one will become plain, plainly open, mm -hmm. known, sold for what it is. Mm -hmm. For the day of Christ will disclose and it be clear because it will be revealed with the fire. Wow. And the fire will test and critically appraise the character, the work of the work. <laughs> Which a person has done. <laughs> if the work which any person has built on this foundation, any product of his effort, whatever survives this test, will get the reward. Wow. But if any person's work is burnt up mm. under the test, he will suffer the loss of it all, losing his reward. Though he himself will be saved, but only as one who has passed through the fire. Have you clearly got that scripture? <laughs> so, what are you building? What is your role on what? Uh, no, there's, there's, there's one thing, there's another thing which is screaming very fast in my mind. That all of us in this land, we have one assignment. I get it again. Yes. We have one assignment of which the foundation was already laid. Now, whoever God brings in this land, whoever is doing any work for God in this land, must be careful. If you are not following this plan, you might struggle for nothing. The Bible has just said that even though you are, you are using gold, are you getting it? To build on that foundation. Whether you are using silver, whatever, however big your church might be, however, you know, however busy it could be in the kingdom of God. But if you are not building 
according to the plan which was laid before the foundation of this earth, you are going to be tested. <laughs> you are going to be tested. So what are we supposed to build in this land? What are we supposed to build? Do we all have the common goal, common vision of what we're supposed to build? This work, according to the scripture, it was not called for one person. Not even a single church. However, even though the church has a thousand and thousand members, it can't do the work which God put in me, in this land. Each of us, I see this a human body. A human body has very, many parts. But each of the parts has a specific role it plays. With the purpose of fulfilling the entire body. Now, when when we when we are moving from Koboko to here, I am aware that the entire, all my body was involved in the, the process. I woke up, eh? I had to, to walk to the bathroom. So whatever every part of my body was doing, eh? was helping me to be here, was helping the whole body to be here. Now what if the hands were saying no, me, me, I'm doing something different. What would have happened? I wouldn't have reached here. But every part of me was on one purpose. Though each one doing different. Can we start appreciating the different ministries which God has put in this land? Because what God has called Bishop David to do, he has not given it to any other person, any other church. You might find that the church has five people, but there is something which God called them to, to add, to build up. Right. So if you neglect it, you might find that uh, you have built something which doesn't have windows. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, okay, we don't have, I don't want to preach. So, now our task is to find the original plan which God had or has for the Rubu Paras. Can you tell your neighbor that our task, our task is to find the original, the master plan of this land? Find the master plan of this land. Okay, I think uh, mm, because of time, let's, let's leave with this one. Let's leave it there. Uh, you, you can go and read the Jeremiah chapter 1 verse, verse 5. Jeremiah was, you know, seeing himself as someone who is real, but God told him, I even knew you are good. I would you to be a prophet before you even came to your mother's womb. You can even read Romans 8, 29, you know what it says and all that. Now, I want us to look at this in this, this land. Because I told you that we are, when we are discipling a nation, we do evangelism, we do discipleship, and we must be intentional in possessing the land. Hallelujah. Now, when you look at the entire land of West Nile. Uh, specifically, we are specifically now looking at the Mukbaras. How many how many districts make up this land of the Mukbaras? Thirteen. Thirteen. Wow. West Nile. Not not the entire West Nile. Yes, because there are there. Yeah. the other side are couples. Here yeah, the Rubbas, the other side are the Anu. Yeah, about six. About six. Mm -hmm. Help me. 
Arua, Arua town, Arua district, Arua city, Arua Mara, Maracha, Terego, Mali, 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 now, when you see the entire land which is comprised of these six districts, why is it that, or are you satisfied about the development of this land? Are you satisfied? about how this land is developing. Okay. Oh, my marker. I was making a simple analysis and asking myself, why is that this nation? Now, let, let, let me say it in terms of the entire nation of Uganda. This nation, Uganda, has a lot of resources. A lot of resources. Amina, a lot of resources. But now, since we are here, just help me to, what are some of the mineral resources in this land? Gold. You have gold? Wow. Yes. Oil. You have oil. Uh -huh. You have limestone. Yeah, some someone told me that they have they have just discovered limestone in the, the other side of Moyo. Moyo, Moyo yes. Moyo. Mm -hmm. What else? What are some of the mineral resources? What about your soil? About timber. What about what about water? Fish. Mm -hmm. Fish you can can go into water. Mm -hmm. So they, they they are not. They are not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about government policies to alleviate people from poverty? Mm -hmm. <laughs> government has very many policies of which I know even you you have some of them here. Uh -huh. Nuts. Uh -huh. Mioga. Mioga. Right now we are having parish before tomorrow. Uh -huh. But uh, very many. Mm -hmm. When we talk about education, very many people from this side well educated. Also, at least, but now, the question comes to say, oh, again, when you talk about uh, prayer, there are a lot of prayers going around because of the different churches, churches pray. Briefly, I'm just mentioning these factors because these are some of the factors which can help Amina, any part, any area, any, you know, any people together. Also, also, yes. members of the yes, <laughs> government policies, Amina, mm -hmm. the spiritual aspect, we have very many churches which are praying, mm -hmm. the resources, mineral resources, we have them. When you look at education, at least it's not a question of illiteracy. At least people are, people are educated. But now, why is it that people are still poor? Why is it that people are still believing God for portion, for what to eat? Why is it that people are living in the situations, condition they are in? What explains that? What else have we done? And what else can we do? 
Yes. Please. I said today we are we are introducing. So we are talking about a lot of stuff. Uh -huh. What else? What do you think? We have remained the way we are, despite the fact that there are, there are a lot of mineral resources in our land. Water is there. The land is fertile. That's why you see green everywhere. People who have you know moved up are you know, outside this nation. You know when you talk about good soils. We were in a Saria. Salia Musala. Just one leg is in in Congo, another one is in Uganda, another one is in Southern Sudan. But you can even tell the difference in the soils. Those who have ever gone there, you there and there you can tell the difference in soils. This, the soil of Uganda is totally different from theirs. But why is it that even what to eat, people just believe God? We are, we are prayerful people. Government policies, at least the government has tried. I'm not a politician. But at least they have tried. With all the programs to alleviate people from poverty. The resources everywhere. Uganda is a rich nation. There are a lot of resources which they have not discovered. And those which they have discovered, they are not telling them to you. A lot. A lot, I'm telling you. Even in Moyo, they have just discovered that there is, there is oil, there is limestone, a lot. So almost the entire land and the entire nation is seated on riches. Riches. But why is it that the people are still poor? Why is it that we are still living on foreign aid, donations? And there are very many even, we have not even talked about donations. Foreign, foreign you know, organizations. Very many of them. Hallelujah. But what, have, what haven't we done? What haven't we done to help this land, to help our people come out of poverty? If it comes to prayer and fasting, we have prayed, we have fasted. Mm -hmm. Which other factor? What else do you think we, we, we have not yet done to have our land breakthrough? Am, am, am I clear? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, I am going to refer to my brother, Pastor Asibaza. He comes from Kabal. Wow. I come, welcome, I, sir. I come from, from Central Uganda. What I've discovered why people in West Nile have not gotten out of the poverty line, please forgive me, <laughs> is selfishness. I'll present it like this. They grow cassava. But cassava, I'm, I'm, I'm beginning agriculture. Last year I was in the garden the whole time. I planted things that were abused. But when they were ready, people came to get them. When you think about only your household, you don't open the hand of God to bless you. When you produce cassava alone, expecting to sell it to your neighbor, you have not created competition for the market. And then you have held God's hands that he has not thought about you to bless you. Do, do Congolese eat cassava? Do Kenyans eat cassava? Do South Sudanese eat cassava? Do Baganda eat cassava? Who is going to buy your cassava? Your neighbor. So the price will never go high. But if you grow something thinking that this thing I'm going to sell it to another tribe because it grows better here, you open the hands of God to bless you because the people you have on mind don't grow the food or it doesn't even grow in their land but it, they need it. For example, why I said Asibaza. All the Irish we eat in Arua come from Kabale. 
If the Kabali people stop to grow the Irish or send it here, shall we eat Irish? No. <laughs> <laughs> but do people in Kabali eat your cassava? No. But the Chinese need your cassava. Have you explored the market of Chinese? I went to Naro for an agricultural trade. <coughs> The only cassava they buy to take to international market, they challenged me, they told me, if you bring your cassava as white as this white board, when it is dried, we'll buy it 5,000. A kilo. A kilo. I looked at the guy, said, you're lying. All the cassava in the market, they said, we have tried. We have been chased away. We cannot buy it. Because that is prepared and designed for a local consumer. So this market will never pick up. But the cassava which the Chinese or Uganda breweries want is the white snow what? Cassava. Can what cassava stay white? Yes. But because you say the sweeter one is the one which is brown and fermented. <laughs> But are you thinking about the other person who is in need of the same product? Wow. <clears throat> the matoke eaters here, have you thought about them? That yes, let me plant this matoke. Yes, I don't eat matoke, I despise it. But a bunch has never gone below 10,000. <laughs> Which means you still have a ready what? A ready market. So, God steps into your needs when you have thought about other people's Yes. Wow. Oi. Oi. That's my own observation. Wow. In Uganda, we have coffee. We don't eat coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but it is providing for our needs in Uganda. My, my mother is, 70, is 69 years. My father is 72 years. They are retired. For the last 10 years, they have not worked. But my phone doesn't ring for sugar. Because my mom needs sugar or salt. Anything below 200,000 she can manage. When she calls me, it is a big what? Big need. I've told you these boys all the time. At 69, every season, she has not less than 500 kilos. Kasi ready to sell at 8,000 shillings and above. She came to visit me, guys, you remember here. When I picked her from the bus, she told me, where do you buy things? Where is your chikubo? You know what chikubo is. Mm -hmm. We went to Duka Road. She was with my sister. They bought a sack of, 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 of rice, a sack of uh, sugar, a box of uh, he said, this is how we visit our sons. That's what I knew. But I was very first said, when we thought about carrying them, we thought there is a shop there. So they purchased all these things, and then they had them. And you have thought about these people. God has no choice but to do what? To bless you. God has intended to bless you if you have thought about your neighbor. He said, that who loves his neighbor. You can finish that one. <laughs> your neighbor carries your blessings. Yes, my neighbor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we have two, two people, two more people? But very brief, eh? Because of time, eh? We said we have one hour. So very brief. Just point, point, point. Yes, 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 Papa. Uh, I think as my brother was speaking, I was thinking about the kind of mentality we have. Mm. Our minds are locked in and just to specific things. Please, please have, have, have you put down that point? Yes. Add that point on. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Continue. So yesterday I was listening to the president's uh, address to the nation. I came late, but I got something. He is actually against this issue of poverty in the nation. And he was telling people how we can come to drive poverty out. If you have three acres of land, one you can use it for subsistence, <laughs> one you use it for what? For commercial. Uh, that is what we say. 
But for us here, the same thing for some mistake is the same thing for Pomaso. You find that after, like, um, let me say, genus, you harvest them in November, December, but you sell it all for almost you know, Christmas uh, expectations. <laughs> so, that one, that you are already in difficult situation here. <laughs> and as the uh, uh, pastor was speaking, I met an engineer today. He's somewhat from Mumbai, but he stays in Kampala. He told me, Pastor, I'm an engineer, but this is why well, I'm talking this because, like, you, you diversify, but our people do not have that kind of. The way you see it, they don't want to diversify. This engineer is an engineer, he's been construction working, he's been used by the government, but at the same time, he has, uh, he has bought land in Entebbe. For cultivation, and then he showed me his on his farm, his chicken poultry farm. I was just amazed. And he said, "We are working hard. First, I get money from different sources. I thought he used to get the money from government because of his construction business, but no. So if we would, be, there was a Muslim who challenged us. She brought Papara smart for us, and they say, what do you use these things for?" And our women were there saying, ah, we sleep on it. Then we cut the baby, another one. The men were saying, we make ceiling board with it. Another one. Now, when we showed only, I think, four things. <laughs> when the Muslim began exploring, telling us what she could use this papyrus mark for, we were all amazed. So, I mean, Diversification. The mentality issue is a Amen. Amen. Okay, because of time. Now, what what do you think will happen if the church can uh, you know after prayers after sermons the church can sit down like this and we just lay strategies on how to take up this land what do you think will happen to our prayers what do you think do you know what the muslims do after they have prayed <coughs> They switch off the machines, their, their homes and whatever. Then they start looking at the different business ventures in the land. So how can we take up this? Who has the ability to do this? Are you getting it? Just tell everybody that prayer without a corresponding action is dead. <coughs> Any prayer you make without your corresponding action, that prayer is dead. <laughs> Amen. So, we, 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 the church now, we must be intentional on how we should take up the seven mountains. We are having another chance of uh, 2026 elections. How is the church preparing for that period? Or we will wait until when we have seen Muslims are standing the witches are standing, and then we start praying against them. Now, if, if you have not, you know, raised your own people to stand, then how can you change things? How can you influence the governance? I mean, uh, okay, the last thing which I want us to discuss on this very issue, which can, you know, lift up the church, to take up the land, is... Uh, is the very purpose of this trade. Amina is the very purpose of this trade. People can't love what they don't know. Oh, yes. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the moment people start, you know, discovering who they are, they will start loving the land. They will start loving themselves. Mm. Are you aware that most, most youth you tell a youth to go to to stay in a in a in a, in a, in a maracha. Are you getting it? He will, he will look at you as if you don't know what you are talking about. People don't love their land. People don't love who they are. Because they don't know who they are. So can we spread this campaign? We make people love their land. How did nations like uh, for instance like uh, England, UK, how do they develop? 
America, Israel, and so many other nations. How did they develop? And yet those nations, they don't have even the resources we are having here. How did they develop? Number one, they, they launched campaigns of making people to love their land, to love their countries. Something you love, you work for it. You die for it. You, tell, you pay whatever it takes to see to it that it is, it is well. Are we together? You, you can study. Sometimes I, I, I study you know, those, those nations. How do they develop? So they, they, they started the preaching the gospel of people loving their land. And they love everything of their land. They love it. Amen. Amen. They love their language. Here we have some Rukbaras who, who don't want who don't want even people to know that they are Rukbaras and they can't even speak their language in public. They are there. They are not here. But they are there. Are you getting it? So okay. What are some of the things which show that you love the land? Or you love someone? We are about to finish. So, uh-huh. What are some of the things which shows that you love someone? Okay. You first live around the, the land. Can we draw examples? Ladies, what shows that your man loves you? Mm -hmm. Please. I want to know, ladies, please, very fast. We don't have time. Uh-huh. Why did we don't have ladies here? Uh-huh. What shows that you your love your husband loves you? Hey. Yes, my sister. Your beauty. Yes, yes, you are beautiful. But you can be beautiful and it's your, your, your husband does not love you. Yes. Care. Number one, care. What did God tell Adam when he was placing him in the garden? Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. Take care, of the garden. Take care. So one of the things which shows that you love the land is to care about your land. You care about what you love. Mm -hmm. What else shows that you love someone? Yes, Bishop. You pray for them. Prayer. Good. Prayer. You can't anything, anything which you don't sometimes it, it might take you even time to think about that thing and even to pray for that thing if you don't love it. But yeah. something you love. Anytime you go before God, you have to present it there. So if we don't pray for our land, it means that we don't love it. Mm -hmm. What else? Yes. Accountability. Accountability, what do you mean, sir? Hey, no pastor understand it. You, you have to account for something which you love. For example, if, if you have your wife, you need to account for it. I, I get you. Accountability. Amina. Hallelujah. You accept that person or, you know, to have responsibility or yes, authority over. That was what I was going to say. You see? Accountability can hold the responsibility. Yes. Responsibility and you know, yes. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. You sacrifice for that. I mean, uh, yes. So, can we, can we do the same to our land? I mean, uh, and so many this is endless. Can we do the same? Because the, we have only quoted one scripture. Genesis chapter 2, verse, verse 15. Adam, God gave him the assignment to keep and to care. Uh -huh. If you don't pray, whatever you pray for, God gives you. Yeah? It's what God gives you. Yeah. If you don't pray for something, what does the Bible say in the... Uh, Psalms chapter 2, verse 8. Ask me of nations. I'll give them to you as 
inheritance. an inheritance. Mm -hmm. So if you don't pray for the land, you will never understand your land. You will never understand it. When, when, I start, when I started praying for nations, God started revealing a lot of things about nations, about tribes, I mean. So, uh, accountability and all that. So, finally, how does God answer our prayers? We are still rotating on one, on, on, on one thing, but I'm just giving different dimensions. How does God answer our prayers? How does God, I think we will end on this because of time. How does God answer our prayers? Okay, let's this, this, just, this, just get a scripture to explain that because of time. How does God answer our prayers? Can we go to Hosea chapter 2? Hosea chapter 2 verse 21. Please, if you are there, please just read. Hosea chapter 2, verse 21. Verse 21. And 22. And in that day, I will mm. respond, says the Lord. I will respond, yes. I will respond to the heavens, mm -hmm. which ask for rain to fall on the earth. Mm -hmm. And they shall respond to the earth, mm -hmm. uh, which begs for the rain in it. Mm -hmm. And the earth shall respond to the grain, mm -hmm. and the wine, and the oil, which beseech it to bring them forth. And this shall respond to Jezreel. And what? Res and this shall respond to Jezreel. Uh, restored Israel, who prays for a supply of them. Amina, have you, have, have, you, have, you, have you understood that scripture, those two verses? Okay, briefly, what are those two scriptures mean or say to us? So when you pray, this is the pattern, this is the process. Mm -hmm. When you pray, you pray to God. Now, someone is praying. He's praying to God. You pray to God. To God. Now, mm -hmm. how does, to whom does God answer to? According to the scripture, he answers to the heavens. Okay? And now, to whom, whom does the heavens answer to? The heavens answer the, the earth. And, the, and what, to whom does the, the, the earth answers to? It answers to the land. Uh-huh. And the land answers the what? To the grains, the, the oil, the wine. And the wine is the one which answers to? The To man. <laughs> Have you seen the, the process? When, when, when the Rukbara prays, when William prays, your prayers go, go to the Lamb's altar in heaven, according to... Um, according to Revelation chapter 8, verse 3, 4, your prayers goes to heaven at the Lamb's altar. Then, God does not directly answer you. He put a process. God answers the heavens. The heavens answers the earth. The earth answers the land. The land answers the grave. What do you need? Why do you pray? You pray for to get this for provision for whatever you want. Amina. And whatever you want is not in heaven. It is here. The guy you want is here. And it is already answered. And it's already answered. It's here. Amina. Those who want marriage, the marriage is here. Whatever you need is here. It's not there. What does the Bible say in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse uh, Verse 18, 19, that he gives us the power. Mm -hmm. Here there is only power. Mm -hmm. Amina. Amen. So the, the heavens just releases power. But that power has to go through all these processes. Now, if I want to talk to Pastor Tiseka, we, is he, I'm here. 
If I call, the call does not go direct to him. Mm. Is that right? Yeah. It will first go to, to the call center. Mm. Okay, I think it is anywhere. Mm. Bugolori. Mm. It will first go to Bugolori. Then those people will check. And who is this one calling? Does he qualify? Amina. Mm. What about the person he wants to reach? Where is that person? Now, if when they check, they might find that you don't qualify. Sometimes there is that lady who answers you. And please don't qualify. You don't have enough credit on your phone. So please don't disturb us. Go and recharge. Amen. But if you have enough credit, if you qualify, they will look for that person you want to reach. Is that okay? Not you to reach him. Even though we are looking at each other. It is them to look for him. Then they will send the message you want to, to deliver to him or to give to him. They will send it to the nearest Mulongoti. You know Mulongoti? Amina. Then that nearest Mulongoti is the one which will send it to him. And then he will pick my call. He will hear what I was communicating to him. Have you seen that process? Yes. It's the same process with prayer. So when you pray, our prayers go to heaven. To, to, to God. The God answers the heavens. So the process until the grains. Now, in the summary, what will happen if the grain which is supposed to respond to you, you are not in good terms? What will happen if the land, you are not in good terms with the, this land? What will happen? <laughs> It will vomit you. It will never give you. It will never respond to your answers. That's why there is a lot of praying. But because we don't have the land. Can I give you a scripture? Just in addition to that. Go to Second Chronicles. Go to Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 10. Only that verse, but you can read the whole of it if you have time. Mm-hmm. Who is there to read for us? Also, oh yes, yes, yes. Also, he built towers in mm. the wilderness mm. and came out many systems. Mm. For he had many livestock, both in the lowlands and in the table lands. And he had farmers and vent dressers in the hills and in the fertile fields of the camel. For he loved the family. Ah, other versions say, he loved for the he soil. loved the soil. Uh -huh. He loved the land. Okay. So they have mentioned, they have mentioned a lot of stuff mm. which this man had. Mm. Moreover, in a desert. Mm. So long as in a desert, in the plain lands, wherever, this man prospered. Mm. And they have given him the reason. Why did he prosper? He loved the soil. Mm. He loved the land. Mm. Out together. Amen. So you will never, you will never. That's why a lot of people, people had people work. People work. People work. People work. Mm. Some some of our people don't have even time for, for, for prayers. They don't have time for prayers. They don't have time for service. Pastor, I'm busy. Pastor, I'm busy. You, you, you have spent almost two weeks without, without coming to church. Hey, Pastor, you know I'm busy. You know I'm busy. Now, when you when it reaches time of giving, most people don't have. Yet they are working so hard. Hallelujah. They don't, they don't love the soil. So the soil can't do what? Yeah. Bless them. Can't bless them. The soil has vomited them. Very many people who are cursing this land, they are outside this nation. True. Very many people who are cursing this land, they are in, in, they are in Kampala on border borders. Yet they have big, big acres. They have acres and acres of land here. They sell it and buy it. They sell it and go and buy it border borders. <laughs> In a one month, they have stolen the border border. That's nothing now. <laughs> Everything is gone. Everything is gone. You don't love the soil. Mm. But how can we love the soil? How can we love this land? By caring for it. Yeah. How? 
How can how can we make people love this land? If we go back and retrieve, download the master plan of this land, Amina, and the people get to know, hey, Kumbe, this was God's plan. This is how God has planned this land to be. Oh, this is what we are supposed to do. Oh, the moment people know that, they will start loving the land. Amina. Amina. Amen. So this training, that's all what this training is all about. Amina. Amen. We want people to start loving this land. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We want people to know what this land, you know, God is requiring it to do. We want people to start preparing for the coming revival. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so many other things. So I want, I want us to stop here, but I request that uh, if we can get around 10 minutes at Pray in two. Mm. So far, what we have mm. learned, mm. I think it will be good for us. Right. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. I, 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 I beg that uh, tomorrow you bring a neighbor, you bring a friend.